Gareth Thomas, the Welsh rugby star, has revealed that he is HIV positive. He's thought to be the first British sportsman to speak publicly about living with the virus. The former British Lions captain said he hoped it would help to break the stigma around the condition. The reason I'm, the reason I'm doing this is because, firstly, I want to... I want to remember what it's like to live again. I want to remember what it's like to feel free. And by doing that, I want to, I want to empower so many other people who are in exactly the same position as me and probably 10 times worse to be able to feel free as well. Well, for more on this, uh, we're joined by Martin S. King, who is an HIV AIDS advocate. He's also written about living with a condition since testing positive in 1985. Mark, thanks so much for joining us here on BBC News. Um, Thank you. Just watching that uh, Gareth Thomas interview, it's so emotional and so sad and what does it tell us about the stigma surrounding HIV? The stigma that, you know, is incredibly still there so many decades after uh, it was first, it first became made, you know, more known to the public. Yes, I, it's very difficult to watch that. It's difficult to see someone newly diagnosed who is clearly in pain and is clearly uh, feeling the weight of HIV stigma. You know, I, I say that even as medical science has improved and those of us living with HIV can now live a normal lifespan, um, certainly someone who is newly diagnosed today uh, can and probably will, that doesn't mean that social stigma hasn't left us. In fact, in many ways, it's greater. Uh, you know, Gareth, uh, in all of his pain, we know that he was feeling forced to make such this, you know, this, this, this very personal uh, 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 information public um, uh, because other people wanted to exploit him and uh, that's very common those of us living with HIV are often perceived as having something inherently wrong with us as being untrustworthy or promiscuous and so all of these questions swirl around us at all times about our value as human beings that's what I see when I look at that Gareth video and, it, and it's it's difficult to watch I you know he says he wants to um, you know, support people living with HIV, and and uh, gosh, I just want to tell him that I'm, as uh, the millions of people living with HIV are supporting him right now at a time where I believe he probably needs it. Mm, and uh, you know, it, it's so important, isn't it, that someone like him, someone who is you know famous, who is very well known, who is a big sports star in this country can talk about HIV so openly? Yes, I mean, you have two, two, two competing things here. You have this man known for his physicality, for his health, and, uh, was, and, uh, and, and he represents, of course, now, the physicality of all of us living with HIV and the health that we can achieve. Uh, and, and then you also have that extreme vulnerability because he's face to face with HIV stigma and he's afraid of what might happen. Mark, your story obviously is, is very interesting because you tested positive with HIV back in 1985. How have things changed, do you think, from then to now? And also, talk me through exactly, you know, where you were in your life when you were diagnosed. I was 24 years old. It was uh, uh, March of 1985. The HIV test, the, the virus had just been identified. The HIV test had only been released two weeks earlier and I took it. Uh, I did because I, I wanted to know if I might be dead in a couple of years. I lived in West Hollywood, California, one of the epicenters of the epidemic, and it was starting to creep into my social circle. So within um, uh, uh, really only a few years, I was living in a graveyard. And uh, so to test positive during that time certainly meant uh, uh, facing a death sentence. There's, there's no doubt about it. And I had no reason to believe that I wouldn't be one of those people within a couple of years. I lived life in two-year increments. That is very different from the life that someone living with HIV, someone diagnosed today, 
will lead. That we still have had a generation of fear and mortality and ignorance about HIV. And so, uh, and so that's going to be very difficult to overcome. And that's why I see the, the fear, you know, Gareth talks about having considered suicide and all of these and how long he had to live when he was diagnosed, which tells us that either, even among those of us who may be at risk, even within the gay community, a lot of us are not well versed on what it means to live with HIV today. And I think the main message I would like to share is that Gareth already is on successful treatment and he has rendered his virus undetectable in his body. What we know is that those who have an undetectable viral load, it's called, as do I, we are incapable of transmitting that virus to someone else. And, and yet, that means that I, I can mm. protect my partner. Uh, and yet, Mark, sorry to, to interrupt you, and yet, unbelievably, uh, a survey showed that a quarter of people in the U.S. still think you can catch HIV by, you know, in ways like drinking water. Drinking water, um, a public bathroom, a pool. You know, uh, we, I, I try to be philosophical about this because I've, I have been trying to educate people throughout my life. And we must remember that every day someone comes of age, someone is having sex for the first time, and somebody is kind of entering life. and and doesn't have this information and needs to be taught. We need to, we need to very systematically teach people what it means to live with HIV and how it is and is not transmitted. Um, and you look at someone who, Gareth, well-educated uh, man of, of, of great accomplishment, and yet he was afraid when he tested positive because he didn't know what it meant. And uh, for those of us lucky enough to have access to successful treatment, many of us here in the United States do not, um, we have every possibility of living a normal lifespan. Certainly, Gareth Thomas does. Okay. Mark King, it's so good to have you on the program. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us.